is me. Let us praise his name together. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us praise his name together. I magnify the Lord with me. Let us praise his name together. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us praise his name together. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us praise his name together. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us praise his name. Let us praise his name together. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us praise his name together. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us praise his name together. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, we bow before your throne. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, we bow before your throne, bow before your throne. Worship at your feet, bow before your throne. You are the glorious God, bow before your throne. Worship at your feet, bow before your throne. You are the glorious God, Magade Bushikaya Baba, Lebra Gazanda Lipuria. Oh God, that answered by fire, the God of Elijah, the God of Elijah, the God that answered by fire. Our Lord, our God, and our King, we worship you tonight. We adore you. We magnify your name. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be worshipped. You are worthy to be adored. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, as we gather together again this morning, gather with us as a pillar of fire, as a pillar of cloud, as a pillar of fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, as we gather together again this morning, envelope us with your fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, Masaka Lepo, Somebody says, hey, God of Elijah, envelope me and my family with your fire in the name of Jesus. Envelope us with your fire in the name of Jesus. As we gather again this morning, God of Elijah, envelope me and my family with your fire, 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 Father and Envelope me and my family with your fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as we gather together this morning, any wicked power that may want to attack us, Father, bury them by thunder, bury them by fire, bury them by thunder, bury them by fire, bury them by thunder, bury them by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, I welcome you this morning in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Spirit, I am saying my lovely sister that I have not seen for a very long time now. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for coming to this prayer meeting. Mazaga Leporia, everyone that is here this morning, I welcome you in the name of Jesus. Mazaga Leporia, every battle going on in your life shall perish by fire. In the name of Jesus, every battle that followed you to this mountain this, this morning shall perish by fire. In the name of Jesus, shall perish by fire. In the name of Jesus, you are going to shout, say, every battle that I brought to this mountain this morning, perish by fire, perish by fire, perish by fire. Liba Gazaga Leporia, Lima Santa Leporia, 
every battle that has followed me to this prayer meeting perish by fire perish by fire perish by fire in the name of jesus every problem every trouble every affliction every infirmity every disease every sickness that has followed me to this mountain this morning die by fire die by fire die by fire la basha kaya baba le bragazanda le poria le bragazanda ya nasaka Leporia, Madibra Gozanda Leporia, Masaka Leporia, anything in my body that God has not planted, die by fire. Be uprooted by fire in the name of Jesus. Anything in my body, anything in my blood, anything in my bones, anything in my flesh, in any of my organs that God has not planted, be uprooted by fire in the name of Jesus. It is written, Jesus Christ said, Every tree that my father has not planted shall be rooted out. Any tree that is growing in my life, tree of affliction, tree of infirmity, tree of disease and sicknesses. Growing my life, growing my wife's life, growing my children's lives, be uprooted by thunder, be uprooted by fire, be uprooted by thunder. In the name of somebody is looking at me, say any wicked power that is launching evil arrows against me, die with, die with your arrow by the thunder fire of the living God. In the name of Jesus, any wicked power that is launching evil arrows against me, against my wife and my children, die with your arrows by the thunder under fire of the living God in the name of Jesus. <laughs> For in Jesus' name we pray. Say you that you are sending evil arrow to me, I send thunder to you. In the name of Jesus, you that you are sending evil arrow to me, I send the thunder of God against you. In the name of Jesus, anyone sending evil arrow to me, to my wife, to my children, receive thunder, receive thunder, receive thunder, receive thunder, receive thunder, receive lightning, receive thunder, receive lightning, receive thunder, receive lightning. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord shot his arrows and he scattered them. He released his lightning. He discomfited them. You are going to pray. Anyone firing evil arrow into my life, arrow of God, arrow of fire, scatter them in the name of Jesus. Arrow of God, arrow of fire, scatter them in the name of Jesus. Arrow of God, arrow of fire, scatter them in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you in the name of Jesus. You are welcome. You are welcome. The Lord that has brought you here will give you victory on this mountain this morning. In the name of Jesus, this is the mountain of victory. This is the mountain of solution. It is the mountain of deliverance. It is the mountain of power. Everyone that comes here is being delivered by the hand of the living God. And the hand of God shall deliver you by fire. Somebody is looking at me right now. As you are hearing the sound of my voice, let the hand of God begin to deliver you by fire. In the name of Jesus, let the hand of God, the hand of fire, enter your body right now and begin to uproot the wickedness of the wicked inside your life. In the name of Jesus, somebody is looking at me. Let the hand of God, the hand of fire, enter your blood, enter your organs, enter your bones, massacre leporia, and begin to uproot the wickedness of the wicked in your life. Somebody is here, you are going to cry. Say, hand of God, hand of fire, uproot the wickedness of the wicked from my life. In the name of Jesus, hand of God, hand of fire, hand of God, hand of fire, uproot the wickedness of the wicked from my life, from my wife's life, from my children's lives. Somebody say, I pray for your husband, pray for your husband, pray for your husband. That is why you are here. That is why you are here. Say, hand of God, hand of fire, uproot the wickedness of the wicked from the life of my my wife, in the name of Jesus, from the life of my husband, from the life of my children, in the name of Jesus, hand of God, hand of fire, uproot the wickedness of the wicked, massacre leporia, from my life, from my wife's life, from my children's lives. Let's go ahead and let's share the video very quickly. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let us reach others. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let us reach others. Let us reach others. My Lima Saka Leporia, the God that has brought you here, shall pleasantly surprise you. In the name of Jesus, 
the Lord will take you to the mountain of deliverance on this mountain. In this prayer meeting, the Lord will take you to the mountain of deliverance in the name of Jesus. In this prayer meeting, the Lord will take you to the mountain of deliverance in the name of Jesus. On this mountain, in this prayer meeting, the Lord will take you to the mountain of deliverance. He will deliver you by fire in the name of Jesus. The Lord will take you to the mountain of deliverance and deliver you by fire in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, the Lord has sent me to you. The Lord will take you to the mountain of deliverance and deliver you by fire in the name of Jesus. Let's go ahead and share the video so that all those that are in captivity can be delivered. Somebody said you are going to cry. Say, God of Elijah, God of Elijah, on this mountain this morning, deliver me and my family from the captivities of darkness in the name of Jesus. God of Elijah, on this mountain this morning, deliver me, deliver my wife and my children from the captivities of darkness, deliver us by fire. Delivers by fire, delivers by fire, delivers by fire, delivers by fire. Mandi Bashaka Yababa, Ebra Gazanda Leporia, Maziba Leporia. You are going to pray any power that will try to challenge my deliverance this morning. God of Elijah, slaughter them by thunder in the name of Jesus. Any power in my father's house, any power in my mother's house, any power in my in-law's house, any power in my place of birth, any power in this name. Neighborhood, in this my neighborhood that we try to challenge my deliverance, that we try to challenge my wife's deliverance, that we try to challenge my children's deliverance. Thunder of God, strike them dead in the name of Jesus. Oh, thunder of God, strike them dead in the name of Jesus. Oh, thunder of God, strike them dead in the name of Jesus. Let us share the video, beloved. Masaka Leporia, Mali Masaka Lepor. This morning, this morning, any idol, any shrine, any altar, any sacrifice any priest that will try to challenge my deliverance, my Lord and my Father, let them meet their Waterloo by your thunder fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them meet their Waterloo by your thunder fire in the name of Jesus. Let them meet their Waterloo by your thunder fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Masaka Lepori Baba, somebody is here. You are going to pray whatever it is that is making me to have terrible dreams, fall down and die in the name of Jesus, anything in my life that is making me to have terrible dreams, fall down, die, 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 fall down, die. In the name of Jesus, anything in my life that is making me to have terrible dreams, scary dreams, troubling dreams, my problematic dreams, die by fire. In the name of Jesus, <laughs> somebody say, pray this prayer. This is your prayer. Every projection of darkness, like a projector, they are projecting into your life. Every projection of darkness into my life, perish by fire in the name of Jesus. Every projection of darkness into my life, into my wife's life, into my children's lives, perish by fire. Projections of darkness, Perish by fire in the name of Jesus. The projectors perish by fire. The projection perish by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us share the video. The Lord that has brought you to this mountain will do something about your situation in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember, our God is an awesome God. He's a wonderful God. He's a call upon me and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things that you know nothing about. The Bible says, Upon Mosiah there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Somebody is here this morning, you shall be delivered, and you shall possess your possession. In the name of Jesus, you shall be delivered and you shall possess your possession. In the name of Jesus, you shall be delivered and you shall possess 
your possession. On this mountain this morning, you shall be delivered. You shall possess your possession. You are going to begin to personally say, on this mountain this morning, I shall be delivered. I shall possess my possession. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, somebody say, I pray this prayer. Say, powers that want to swallow my glory. You are a liar. Die by fire. In the name of Jesus. Powers that want to swallow my glory. You are a liar. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Any power anywhere hey, hey, that wants to swallow the glory that God has given to me, that God has given to my wife, that God has given to my children, be buried by thunder, be buried by fire, be buried by thunder, be buried by fire in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, say any wicked power that wants to use the glory of my children, I bury you now in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that wants to use the glory of my children. Somebody said this is your prayer. That is why you are here this morning. Any wicked power that wants to use the glory of my children be buried by thunder in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that wants to use the glory of my children that wants to use my glory be buried by fire. For in Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen to Jesus. The top peak of our warfare tonight is when you are always getting the wrong results in life. When you are always getting the wrong results in life. Hallelujah. I said there are some people, there are some men and women, no matter how hard they try in life, they will always get the wrong results in anything they do. Somebody is here. You are going to pray any wicked power that is always manipulating my results. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that is always manipulating my results. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that is turning my good results to bad results. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that is turning my successful results into failure. Die by fire. Any wicked power that is turning my successful results to failure. Die by fire. In the name of Jesus. Meaning that there are some people, there is no, there is no amount of effort you put. Your results will always be the wrong results. Hallelujah to Jesus. Strange things happen in this life. This is another state of spirituality that can be very difficult to explain sometimes. Because how can someone put in the efforts, put in the right input, but the end result is always a wrong result? Somebody is here. You are, every time you try so hard, but your result will always be wrong. Hallelujah to Jesus. You are going to pray any wicked power attacking my good results. Die by fire. That's a very simple prayer. Any wicked power attacking my good results. Die by thunder. Die by fire. Die by thunder. Die by fire. In the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that is always attacking my good results. Always turning my right results to wrong results. My good results to bad results. Massacre Lepolia. Be wasted by thunder. Be wasted by fire. Be wasted by thunder. In the name of Jesus. Hmm. Somebody said, that is my story. I know. A lot of people call us. They don't understand what is going on. They try everything. They put in every effort. But the result will always be wrong. End result will always be wrong. Even when they put all the right parameters. <laughs> Just for them to know that what is happening to them is not ordinary. You are going to pray 
any force of darkness any force of darkness attacking my results be destroyed by the power in the blood of Jesus. Any force of darkness attacking my results be destroyed by the power in the blood of Jesus. Any force of darkness that is attacking my results be destroyed by the power in the blood of Jesus. Any force of darkness attacking my results, attacking my wife's results, attacking my children's results. O thunder of God, strike them dead in the name of Jesus. O thunder of God, strike them dead in the name of Jesus. Any power that wants me to always end up as a failure, any power that wants me to always end up as a failure, no matter how hard I try, wherever you are, let the thunder of God strike you dead in the name of Jesus. Let the thunder of the living God strike you dead. Whatever you are doing to me, let it backfire in the name of Jesus. Whatever you are doing to my wife, whatever you are doing to my children, let it backfire in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that is always attacking my good results, die by fire in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, pray this prayer very well. Any wicked power that is always attacking my good results, die by fire in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that is always attacking my good results, die by fire in the name of Jesus. Yeah, meaning that they are always attacking your good results. A lot of people have called me, say, Pastor, the people that I teach, the people that I train, they are always getting the good results. I that I train them, always having bad results. Why, Pastor? <laughs> say, definitely it is not ordinary. Because if those you are training are passing, it means one thing, you have the right skill. You have the right talent. Hallelujah. You have the way with all to do well because what it means is that your students are passing. They didn't know anything before they came to you. You taught them and they are passing. But you, their teacher, you are failing. <laughs> you are going to pray. <laughs> Any wicked power that wants me to be a laughing stock. <laughs> Oh my God, any wicked power that wants to turn me into a laughing stock wherever you are, be buried by fire in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that wants to turn me into a laughing stock, that wants to turn me, turn my wife, turn my children into laughing stock in the presence of our mates, in the presence of our peers. Oh my God, in the presence of our colleagues, die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh yes. People have this problem a lot. Hallelujah to Jesus. They teach others, but they fail. The people that they teach pass, but they fail. I say we are going to be getting some insights from the Bible this morning. There was a very frustrating story <laughs> of a, a man who planted a vineyard. In the Bible, he was expecting to get good grapes, but every time he tried, he was always getting the wild grapes, no matter how hard he tried. The man, let's go into the Bible and read. In fact, it was very funny to me when, when I was reading it. Isaiah chapter 5. It was a very, it was a very strange story. From verse 1, the Bible says, Now I will sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. Okay? Now I will sing to my well-beloved a song of my well-beloved touching his vineyard. He went out, amen, to cultivate a vineyard with all his heart, expecting that this is going to be return on investment, expecting that ah, this vineyard is going to do very well. Somebody said, any wicked power 
attacking your good expectations in life shall fall down and die in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that is always attacking your good expectations in life will fall down and die in the name of Jesus. We massacre the prayer. You are going to personalize that prayer. Go say, God of Elijah, God of Elijah, God of Elijah, any wicked power that is always attacking my good expectations in life, kill them by thunder, kill them by fire, kill them by thunder, kill them by fire, kill them by thunder, kill them by fire, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Some wicked powers, they can read your mind, they can see what you're expecting. And what do they do? They attack your expectations. You have been expecting something good to happen. They will turn it into something bad. Hallelujah. Ah, that, another brother of mine has appeared here. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. God bless you, sir. You are welcome. In the name of Jesus. Eh? They are always turning your good expectations to bad results. They are always turning your good expectations to bad results. You are expecting something good to happen, but they will turn it to bad results. Any wicked power that is turning your good expectations to bad results shall be destroyed by the power in the blood of Jesus. They shall be destroyed by the power in the blood of Jesus. In the name of So let us read the story of this man. He said, my well-beloved had a vineyard in a very fruitful year. You can imagine. Look at the introduction. The vineyard was on a very fruitful hill, meaning that that vineyard has no reason whatsoever not to do well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Meaning that the vineyard was planted on a very good soil. This is what we're saying. Some people will work very hard. The right inputs, the right resources, the right references, everything is right. But the result will always be wrong. It is not ordinary. There are some forces attacking the work of your hands. Somebody say you are going to cry like a wounded lion. Say any wicked power attack in the works of my hands. I bury you today by the power in the blood of Jesus. Any wicked power attacking the works of my hands. I bury you today by the power in the blood of Jesus. Any wicked power attacking the works of my hands. Attacking the works of my wife's hands. Attacking the works of my children's hands. Your end has come. That by fire in the name of Jesus. Your end has come. That by fire. La Boshe Caleporia. That by fire in the name of Jesus. Jesus, any wicked power. I don't care where they are coming from. I don't care. Even if they are my, in my bloodline, attacking the good works of my hands shall die by thunder, shall die by fire, 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 shall die by thunder. In the name of Jesus. This is a typical life scenario. The reality of life. My well-beloved had a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. God has planted you on a very fruitful hill, but the enemy has decided that you will not be fruitful. That's what, that's what this story is all about. God has planted you on a very fruitful hill, even those who are not planted on the kind of hill you are planted, they are doing well. But you that you are planted on a very fruitful hill, on a more fertile hill, on a more, a, a more fertile soil, you are, you are struggling to survive. The thunder of God will fire any power that is harassing your life. In the name of Jesus, the thunder of God will bury any power that will not allow you to succeed in the land of success. That's what we're saying. A man is planted in the land of success, but they are failing. A man is planted, a man, a woman is planted in the land of abundance. Yes, they are dying of poverty. They are dying of lack. 
Hallelujah to Jesus. Some people, they don't have any reason whatsoever not to make it in life. If some wicked forces of darkness are not attacking them. Hallelujah to Jesus. And he fenced it. <laughs> he, he planted the vineyard. He fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof. So anything that could impede or impede the growth of that vineyard, he, he sorted it out. He put a fence so that uh, rodents and other you know, animals will not be coming to, to disturb the farm. Even the stones that could distort the growth of that vineyard, he removed them. Look at his efforts. Somebody say, I want you to cry. Any wicked power that is frustrating my efforts in life, I bury you on this mountain this morning in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that is frustrating my efforts in life, I bury you today in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that is frustrating my efforts, frustrating my wife's efforts, frustrating my children's efforts, I bury you now in the name of Jesus. I bury you now in the name of Jesus. I bury you now in the name of Jesus. Yes. He planted the vineyard. He fenced it. He removed the stones and planted it with the choicest vine. Planted it with the choicest vine, meaning that he put all the right inputs and built a tower in the midst of it. And also made a wine press. You can see. He was already expecting. This vineyard must give me bumper harvest. <laughs> he first it. He made sure he planted it on a fruitful hill. A fertile hill. First it. So that no animal will disturb it. Gathered out all the stones. So that nothing will distort the growth of that vineyard. And now planted it with the choicest vine, the choicest vine. And built a tower in the midst of it. And also made the wine press therein. Mari Masaka Yababa. I pray for somebody here. All the powers attacking your bumper harvest in life. The thunder of God will bury them now in the name of Jesus. All the wicked powers attacking your increase in life, attacking your gain in life, attacking your profit in life. They will die by thunder. They will die by fire. They will die by thunder. They will die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. These are the realities of life. Everything that was necessary was done to have a good result, to have a good report, to have a good harvest. Hallelujah to Jesus. The Bible says, and he looked, he looked, he looked that he should bring forth grapes. He looked, he had planted choices, right? He had built a tower in the midst of it. He had also made ready a wine press that once this, these grapes begin to come out, <laughs> I'm supposed to enjoy myself here. At least I've planted the choicest grapes, the choicest vine. I have fenced it. I have removed all the stones. Nothing should distort. Nothing should affect the, the result of this hard work. Oh, look at what happened. <laughs> the Bible says, and he looked, he looked, he was expecting, he was expecting that he should bring forth grapes. And it brought forth wild grapes. Where the wild grapes came from? Or come from. He planted choicest vine. He is expecting good grapes. But what came out was wild grapes. Somebody said, any wicked power 
that is always distorting your effort, that is always distorting your work, shall die by the power in the blood of Jesus, shall die by the power in the blood of Jesus. It is the height of wickedness. And this is what so many people are going through in life. Everything is right. Everything is well positioned. Everything is well watered. Everything is well manured. Even sometimes apply fertilizer so that the result can be good. So that the result can be right. But you see, Despite all the efforts, the result is always wrong. You are here this morning. The powers that are behind your problem, ah, they will leave you alone this morning. They will die in the name of Jesus. The powers behind your frustration will die today in the name of Jesus. The powers behind your frustration will die today in the name of Jesus. The powers, the wicked powers, the very wicked powers, because they are wicked, the wicked powers behind your frustration, they will die today. They will die today by the power in the blood of Jesus. Before we leave this prayer meeting, they will die by fire. They will die by thunder. They will die by fire. They will die by thunder. In the mighty name of Jesus. How wicked how wicked how wicked they will allow a man to sow but they will attack his harvest they will allow a man to work very hard but have very poor results some people, sometimes they can say, Pastor, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I have tried everything in the book, outside the book, in the box, outside the box. Why is it that every time is still the same result of failure? The God of Elijah will deliver you. If this is your story on this mountain this morning, I want you to share this video. There are millions of people that are in this category. There are millions of people who are suffering like this. We need to touch them now. We need to get to them so that the God of this mountain, the God of Elijah, the God of Olukoya, can deliver them by fire, massacre Leporia. And I know as you are connecting to them, the Lord is also delivering you in the name of Jesus. As you are connecting to others, as you are sharing this video now, the God of this mountain is also delivering you in the mighty name of the mysteries of life. Tell me, what has he done wrong? He did everything right to get good grapes. To get the right result. Why? Do you know the meaning of wild grapes? <laughs> the enemy is so terrible. <laughs> Somebody has planted choicest, vine, choicest, choicest. He now got to the harvest. He saw wild grapes, useless grapes. That's the meaning of wild. He can't use it. And you can see the wicked of the wicked. They allow grapes to grow. But they made sure it was wild. <laughs> it was useless. Ah, my Lord. Any power that is making sure, that is always making sure that your efforts are not useful to you. Masaka Leporia. Any wicked power that is always making sure that your efforts are not useful to you shall die in the name of Jesus. They shall die. In the name of Jesus, die, 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 die. In the name of Jesus, die, 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 die. In the name of you see what they have done to this man is that they made sure that his efforts was useless. I mean, they, maybe they should have even stopped the grapes from growing at all. The man was having high hopes. <laughs> he was looking at grapes. Ah, thank God, my vineyard is doing very well now. Only to get to the place and found out that they were wild grapes, useless grapes. Ah, any power 
that wants the works of your hands to become useless. Oh, my Father, the thunder of God will clear them away. In the name of Jesus, any wicked power that wants the work, works of your hands to always become useless shall be cleared away by the thunder fire of the living God. Let us share this video. Don't forget to like the page. Don't forget to love the page. Let us, let us read more of the story of our friend. The Bible says in verse 3, for those who are just coming in, we are reading Isaiah chapter 5. And we are in verse 3 now. We are reading about a man who planted the vineyard in a very fruitful hill, very fertile hill. He fenced it. He removed all the stones. The Bible says he even planted choicest vine. Amen. He built a tower. Then he also built a wine press because the essence of planting the vineyard is to produce wine. But the grapes were not useful to produce wine. Wasted effort. Ah, any power sponsoring wasted effort in your life shall be wasted by fire in the name of Jesus. Somebody is looking at me. If your amen can be dynamic, even as you share this video, any wicked power that is sponsoring wasted effort in your life shall be wasted by the thunder fire of the living God. Every time you put in your best, but they are sponsoring your, your best to be wasted effort, they shall be wasted in the name of Jesus. You are going to pray any wicked power that wants my effort to be wasted effort that by fire in the name of Jesus any wicked power that wants my effort to always be a wasted effort be wasted by the thunder fire of God in the name of Jesus yes if they are wicked enough to turn your good effort to wasted effort. And these are the trademarks of witches and wizards. These are the trademarks of witches and wizards. They turn your good effort into a wasted effort. Where did white grapes came, come from? This man planted choicest, choicest vine. Somebody say, I pray for you. Any power that is turning your best to the poorest, they are turning your best to the poorest. They are turning your best to failure. They will be cleared the way. They shall be cleared the way by the thunder fire of the living God. The thunder of God will not spare them in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that is turning your best effort, your good effort, your best effort to, to, to rubbish, the fire of God will clear them away. Whether there are witches and wizards in your bloodline, witches and wizards in your father's house, witches and wizards in your mother's house, witches and wizards in your in-law's house, witches and wizards in your place of birth. Because that's one of their modus operandi. How they can be wicked. <laughs> yes, they will allow you to plant. They will allow you to work very hard. They will allow you to put the very best but it will come very, very bad. Hallelujah to Jesus. Massacre Lepolia. Somebody say a simple prayer. Say any wicked power in my father's house that is turning my good into bad, die by fire in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power in my father's house that is always turning good things in my life into bad things, die by fire in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power in my foundation, in my wife's foundation, in my children's foundation that is always turning good things in our lives into bad things. Oh, you do, you do not deserve to live. Be cleared the way by thunder. Be cleared the way by fire. Be cleared the way by thunder. In the name of Jesus. Rabba Shakaya Baba. Libra Gazanda Leporia. Libra Saka Leporia. For in Jesus' name. Okay, let us, let us see what happened to the man. The Bible says in verse 3, And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, and, and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard, you can see now. He's now saying, look at what my vineyard. He now was looking at the vineyard. 
Thank you, it was the vineyard that failed him. Thank you, it was the vineyard that didn't cooperate with him. Basaka Lepuria, somebody is here. Any wicked power that will not allow your good efforts to cooperate with your destiny shall die by fire in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that will not allow your good efforts to cooperate with your destiny must that will not allow men to see the manifestation of your good efforts in your life shall die by fire in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power in your father's house that will not allow men to see the manifestations of your good efforts shall die by fire in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that will not allow me, my wife and my children, to see the manifestation. That will not allow the whole world to see the manifestation of our good efforts shall die by fire in the name of Because what they did to this man was to make sure that his good efforts did not manifest, did not materialize. It's a simple life story. Sometimes when you read the Bible, you think you are reading uh, Mills and Booms. You think you are reading a magazine. But you are actually reading the story of your life. You are putting efforts. Your very best you're putting. But the effort you are putting in is not manifesting. Every time after all said and done is always a wrong results, wrong results, wrong results. Somebody said, the Lord will deliver you from the bondage of wrong results. In the name of Jesus, you are going to cry. Say, God of Elijah, God of Elijah, God of Elijah, deliver me, my wife and my children, from the bondage of wrong results. In the name of Jesus, Father, I cry to you, deliver me. It's a bondage. You are not lazy. You did not procrastinate. You did everything that was supposed to be done. Even the people that didn't do as much as you did, they are getting better results. Ah, whatever it is that is in your father's house that is boasting that you will not succeed in life shall be wasted by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Any power that is saying you will not have good success in life because this is what is happening. They, they, they turn his good grapes into wild grapes. Can you see wickedness? Somebody said you are going to use this as a direct prayer. Say any wicked power that is turning my good grapes into wild grapes die by fire in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power turning my good grapes, my wife's good grapes, my children's good grapes, oh my father, into wild grapes die by fire, die by thunder, die by fire, die by thunder in the name of Jesus. You can see they were turning his good grapes into white grapes. This can only be witchcraft. And what do they want? They want him to fight his own efforts. And this is what is happening here. He now started fighting his vineyard. <laughs> oh my God. What? What is the fault of the vineyard here? Is the vineyard a human being? Does the vineyard have the mind of his own? Is the was it the vineyard that said that the grapes should be wild instead of good grapes? But that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to fight yourself. The enemy wants you to be confused. The enemy wants you to fight yourself, to be confused. You begin to fight your own efforts. Look at what he did. When I was reading this, this scripture, I was wondering. I said, hey God, look at what he did. Verse 3. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 3. The Bible is very sweet and very rich. The Bible, the Bible says, And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, and, my, and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard. What has the vineyard done? Sometimes we are attacking the wrong target. Sometimes 
we are attacking the wrong targets. Instead of this man to attack the powers that are turning his, his, his good grips into wild grips to attack the powers, wasting his good efforts, turning his good efforts into poor harvest, instead of him to go on his knees, to go and drive fast, to attack those powers, he's now attacking his vineyard. Look at what he did. <laughs> Very foolish. The Bible says, what could have been done more to my vineyard? that I have not done in it. This was the language of a very frustrated man. Somebody said, every language of frustration going on in your life right now because you are frustrated shall be cleared away in the name of Jesus. Every language of frustration that is going on in your life right now shall be cleared away by the power in the blood of Jesus. Somebody is here. You shall no longer be frustrated. Your good grapes shall no longer be converted into wild grapes in the mighty name of Jesus. Your good effort shall no longer be converted to bad results to bad, to wrong results in the name of Jesus. And from today, Massacre Neporia, whatever you sow, you shall reap. The Bible says, if you sow bountifully, you shall reap bountifully. He says, if you sow sparingly, you shall sow sparingly. Yes, if the man had done a poor job, we would have said, well, it's because he did a poor job. Let's say he didn't bother to plant the vineyard on a fruitful hill. Or let's say he didn't bother to fence it around and animals were coming to eat his grapes. Let's say, oh, he didn't remove the stones. Maybe that's the reason why the, 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 the harvest was poor. No, he did everything. He did everything. Somebody is looking at me. This is your story. You are like this vineyard. This, this, this uh, man planting vineyard. You do everything right. But everything comes wrong. Everything comes wrong. You every time you do everything right. Oh my Yima Kuria, the power that is torturing you, that is making everything that you do right to come out as wrong, shall die by fire in the name of Jesus. That power that is harassing you, that power that is attacking you, that is making your good effort to look bad to look wrong, shall die by fire in the name of Jesus. So what they are doing is to make your good effort to bring out wrong results. You are here, you are listening to me. The God of this mountain will deliver you. This has continued for years. Your good efforts are always turning to wrong results. Despite all that you have done, you did with your heart. You did with everything within your being. Expecting that, well, by the time the result of what I've, do, I've done comes out, everybody is going to commend me. <laughs> but when the result comes out, they're always condemning you. And you are frustrated. That's why you are here this morning. The God of this mountain has seen what is happening to you. He will deliver you by fire. The, the God of this mountain can see the hand manipulating your results. Uh -huh. You are going to pray. Any evil hand manipulating my good results be cut off by the thunder fire of the living God. Any evil hand that is manipulating my good results, that is turning my good results into bad results, that is turning my good grapes into white grapes, thunder of God, cut them off in the name of Jesus. Thunder of God, cut them off in the name of Jesus. Thunder of God, cut them off in the name of Sometimes it may be an evil hand from your father's house. It may be an evil hand from your mother's house. It may be an evil hand from your in-law's house. They say, always turn his good efforts to bad results. Always turn his good efforts into wrong results. Everybody can see that you are putting effort, but they cannot see your effort. Everybody can see that you are putting effort, but they cannot see your effort. They can't see it. 
It has been buried in failure. Somebody say, you are going to pray. Any wicked power that is burying my efforts in failure, ah, ah, only goes and thunder. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that is always burying my good efforts in failure, burying my wife's good efforts in failure, burying my children's good efforts in failure, be wasted by thunder, be buried by fire, be wasted by thunder, be buried by fire, be wasted by thunder. Please share this video. A lot of people are suffering. Those that are working hard are looking like lazy men and women. And the lazy ones who are not being troubled by any power, <laughs> they are looking like the strong men. Because it is the result that matters. It is not the input. It is not the beginning that matters but the end. It is not what you did that matters. It is what you produce that, that matters. Look at what this man did. He did everything that anyone that wants to succeed should do. He did. He, he, tick, he checked all his box. He checked all his box. Everything he did. No wonder the man was very mad. In verse 4, Isaiah 5, 4, he said, what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, <laughs> brought it forth white grapes. It was very interesting story when I was reading it. Holy Spirit was just giving me interpretation. Even though I was reading the story of a man who planted the vineyard, but the Lord was telling me this is the reality of life. A lot of people are frustrated like this. A lot of people are grinding like this under the hammer of frustration. Hallelujah to Jesus. And there is nothing they, they do. It will always end up in failure. It will always end up in wrong results. Hallelujah to Jesus. And now go to, now look at what he now did. And this is what the enemy wants. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the edge thereof. You can see. <laughs> the protection that was protecting wild animals from coming in to attack the farm. He removed it. What, what, is, what is the essence of, of building a fence around the vineyard that is only producing wild grapes? And that is what the enemy wants. They want you to break your edge. The only reason why they are turning your good grips into wild grips is because they want you to, out of frustration, to break your own edge. A lot of people are like this. Out of frustration, they break their edge. And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8, it says, he that digs the pit shall fall into it. He that breaks the edge, what will happen? The serpent will bite. It reminded me of a young lady, 18-year-old girl, walked into my office. When I was in the United Kingdom, I said, yes. I've never seen her before. She came from another church. She's, I said, yes. Can I help you? The first thing she said, I want to offend God. I sat down. You want to offend God? You are in the wrong office. <laughs> you, well, well, you want to offend God, so it is my own office. that They told you that that is where they offend God. Is that why you have come here? Now looked at her. Young lady, why do you want to offend God? He said, God offended me. Ah, <laughs> I have never heard this before. God offended you. Ah. He said, since I've been a young child, I've always loved God. I've always served God. I've always followed God. And God bless me. She said, I was in a party one day when a man saw me. I didn't say anything to him. The man just looked at me and liked me and said, I will help you. I will get you a passport and a visa so that you can travel abroad, so that you can go and study abroad. Ah, the girl said that day, it was as if I entered paradise, physical paradise. Eh? Because I'm from a very poor home. My parents don't even have money at all. Somebody is promising me this. My one, my 
part of my mind was saying, maybe this man was just joking. The other part was saying, but I've never met this kind of man, this man before. He must be serious. Even when she went home and she told her very poor parents, they, they said, ah, it's because you are a young girl. He wants to sleep with you. That's why he's only deceiving you. No, 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 no. They were, before you could say Jesus is Lord, passport and visa was ready. The young lady traveled abroad. Hallelujah to Jesus. But in the process, oh, she was, she was not, well, when she traveled, she was, she was a minor. She was just 18 when she came to my, to my office. Okay. When she landed, they were trying to put her in school. Somehow, the schools were rejecting her. For God knows what reason. And after some time, after they have carried her from school to school, they thought she was being trafficked. They thought they were trafficking her. And that was where it became a trouble for the, for the guardian. They say you are trafficking this girl. It became a serious case. It became a serious case that the guardian was suspended because the guardian was doing the social work. Now, how can you, a social worker, be, traffic, be trafficking a child? The woman said, I didn't traffic any child. It was my cousin who brought her from Africa and said, I should help. And I, God help me. I'm not trafficking anybody, but they didn't listen to her. To cut the long story short, this lady was now 18 years old. I think she came into the country when she was about, I, I don't know precisely, but maybe about 14, 13 or 14. But now she was a young adult. The law can now apply to her. So what happened? They were going to deport her because she didn't have any papers. So at that time, when they want to deport, they will begin to ask the, the deportee to be reporting at the police station, at the airport. <laughs> they will be asking you to go and be signing at the police station at the airport so that when they are ready, they will grab the deportee one day and deport the person. That was how she came to Mountain of Fire. I said, that's why you want to offend God. She said, yes. How do you want to offend God? Because where do you see the God? Of I said, no. He says, I'm a virgin. I am ready to disvagin myself, to pollute myself, to everything the Bible says, I want to go against it. Ah. In fact, it was as if I was having a dream. I've never seen that before in my life. You can see frustration. You can see what frustration can make a man or a woman to do to themselves. Just like this, this vineyard man is trying to do to his vineyard man. And God led me in a very wonderful question. How that question came out of my mouth, I don't know myself. I said, okay, if you now offend God, who is now going to help you? <laughs> because the God that is supposed to help you is the only one that can help you in the imbroglio you are, you are right now. If you now offend him, is it Satan now that is going to help you? Oh my God. That was not a question that that young lady expected. She broke out into tears. She cried. She cried. She cried. I said, no. You are a child of God. You know God. You know that everything that has happened to you is not God. It's like this woman, this man, this farmer, blame me, his vineyard <laughs> for what the enemy has done. I said, no. It's not God that has done this to you. God was the one that brought that man. God was the man that made that man to go to the embassy, get, got a visa without them rejecting the visa. They gave it to you. That's God. God made him to buy the ticket. God made you to travel. But the powers of your father's house that followed you, <laughs> they are the ones that tried to stop they, initially, they thought it was a joke. They said, ah, she's not going anywhere. But right before them, they saw you progressing. So that was the reason why they waited for the very last, the end of it, and they attacked. 
because the end of it was that they will put you in school, you will settle down. After some time, they will do your papers, do yourself. So they waited for you to that stage. And that is the stage they are attacking right now. My young, beautiful lady, the, 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 the daughter, I'm telling you right now, if you offend God, that is the end for you. Because who is going to help you? After she had finished crying, she let it out. I knew she was really disappointed. And I blessed God that day that it was not a randy pastor that she went to meet. Not the kind of pastor that would say, ah, you want to offend God? You want to imagine yourself? Ah, I don't worry. I'm very ready to help you here. Yeah. Thank God she didn't meet that kind of pastor. Thank God that God sent her to the right place. So I told her, I said, no problem. Now that you have come here, and that's God again that has brought you here, okay? And I know my own assignment is to make sure that the power of God manifests in your situation. She was looking at me. I said, from tomorrow, three days dry. Are you ready? She said, mm, okay, I'm ready. She started cooperating to the glory of God. The Lord changed her story. After the fasting, the next time she went to the airport police station, they told her not to come back there again. She should go back to the city where she was and be reporting. And eventually, the Lord took care of that, of that case. Listen to me. The enemy is so wicked that they will so frustrate you. You begin to fight God and fight yourself. You are going to pray. Somebody's here. Any wicked power that wants to frustrate me to the level of fighting God and fighting myself, die by fire in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that wants to frustrate me, that wants to frustrate my wife, that wants to frustrate my children to the level of fighting God and fighting ourselves, die by fire in the name of... Have you not had... Some people, if you preach to them, say, don't talk about God to us. We don't want to hear. We don't want to hear. When uh, something did, when this happened, where was God? When their grandmother died, where was God? When their ancestors died, where was God? When, when the great grandfather died, where was God? Say, but your great grandfather was old enough to go. He's not going to live forever. That's why he died. He said, no, I love him. He's not supposed to go. God should have, if, if God wanted to show that he was God, my, my 90-year-old grandfather was not supposed to have died. Can you see? The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So what did this man do? I will take away the edge thereof, and it shall be eaten up. <laughs> Can you see? He was so mad. The effort he has made, can you see? He said he will take away the edge and it shall be eaten up and break down the wall thereof and it shall be trodden down. He was so mad. Are you frustrated? Are you here? And you are frustrated. Because of what the wicked is doing to you, the Lord will deliver you by fire. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will deliver you by fire. All the witches and wizards that are dealing with you, the God of Elijah will deal with them by fire. In the name of Jesus, the witches and wizards that are frustrating your life, the God of heaven and earth will deal with them by fire. In the name of Jesus, the God of heaven and earth will deal with them by fire. The God of Elijah will deal with them by fire. All the witches, the wizards, occultic powers, marine powers, serpentine powers, or banjo spirits, Mary spirits, the familiar spirits, idol worshippers, serpentine powers that are dealing with you. The wrath of God will fall upon them in the name of Jesus. The wrath of the Most High God shall fall upon them in the name of Jesus. Hmm. This is what is happening in our in our world. This is what if you don't fight, if you don't go and wear the garment of war, they will useless you. If you don't go and wear the garment of war, element of salvation, shield of faith, the Bible says put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand the while of the devil. And that is what the garment of war, shield of salvation, element of, um, uh, element of salvation, shield of faith, sword of the spirit, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth. Ah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't wear all those things, they will, they will scatter you. Hallelujah to Jesus. 
So this man was so angry. He said he will take away the edge thereof and it shall be eaten up and, <laughs> and break down the wall thereof and it shall be thrown down and I will and I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up brass and thorns and I will also, and I will, which means it will no longer clear it. So weed will take over. Look at the effort. A man that has put in so much effort planted a vineyard on a fruitful hill, built an edge around it, removed all the stones, planted the choicest vine, built a tower, even made a wine press, expecting good, good results, bumper harvest. But look at what, what he's doing now because he was very mad. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody is here. Any wicked power that wants to frustrate you to the level where they want you to begin to use your own hand to destroy your the work, the, to destroy your own work. Let the fire of God destroy them in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that wants to drive you nuts, <laughs> they want to drive you nuts, they want to drive you to the level of frustration where you begin to attack your own work, where you begin to attack your own self. Massacre the poria. Let the thunder of God finish them. Let the fire fire of the Holy Ghost destroyed because they drove him to not. He started destroying his own efforts. He started attacking his own efforts. We also command the clouds that they rain no rain. This man must have been very mad. He said we command the clouds not to even rain on top of it. Ha. My God. Any power that will push you to the level where you will want to destroy yourself. Let that power fall down and die in the name of Jesus. Any power that will push you to the level where you will want to destroy yourself. Let that power fall down and die. In the name of Jesus, any power that we want to push me, that we want to push my wife and my children to the level where we want to destroy ourselves. Oh Lord, my father, bury such powers in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, my father, bury such powers. You can see what I'm saying. Is that not the reality of life? Some people are pushed to the point of committing suicide. Some people are pushed to the point of committing suicide. Look at what he said. He said we break the edge so that the animals, wild animals can eat it up. <laughs> break down the wall. It shall be thrown down. He said I will let waste <laughs> the effort. He's not even thinking of all the effort. Look at the wickedness of the wicked. Eh? He's not even thinking of the, the, of the sweat. He sweated. Planting this vineyard. He said he shall not be pruned, nor digged, <laughs> which means he will not, he will not clear it. Yeah? But there shall come all briars and thorns that wild, wild wind will take over. <laughs> I will also command the clouds that they rain, no, no rain upon it. Yeah? He will tell the cloud, you must not, you can see how frustrated he was. Have you gone to that level? Have they driven you to that level? That nothing is working. Your sweat, your sweat are they are like sweats of the, the drops of blood, yet nothing is working. They frustrate your very good efforts. Everything you do is, the, is only wrong results you have to show. The God that you are crying to this morning will deliver you. In the name of, he said, for the for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. So the Bible was not saying, was not trying to interpret what was actually happening. The vineyard of the host of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the men of Judah is the pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, a cry. Somebody said, you are going to pray. The powers of my father's house oppressing my life, fall down and die in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, my father, let the powers, the wicked elders, the witches and wizards of my father's house, of my mother's house, of my in-law's house, of my place of birth, oppressing my life, fall down and die. In the no wonder the Bible says, oppression maketh a wise man mad. A wise man. 
who was wise enough to plant his vineyard on a fruitful hill. A wise man who was wise enough to build an edge around his vineyard so that no animal will come in and eat up his grapes. A wise man who was wise enough to remove all the stones so that nothing will affect his harvest. A wise man who was wise enough to build the tower. A wise man who was wise enough to say, look, you better prepare the factory where you are going to be producing the wine before the grapes are ready. You know, he, 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 he also built the factory. But when oppression came, <laughs> he became mad. Oppression make it a wise man mad. Some people, they say, no, I cannot be mad. It's because you are not oppressed yet. And you will not be oppressed in Jesus' name. When a man is oppressed, he will forget about his sanity. He will become insane. This man went bonkers completely. Look at all his efforts. Everything he has spent money to do. Everything he has taken time to do. He now, he now started breaking them apart by himself. It was so bad. He said he will even tell the cloud not to pour rain on top of the vineyard. That was how much he was oppressed. Is this what they are doing to you? Do you feel oppressed? The God of this mountain the God of Elijah, the God that created the heavens and the earth shall deliver you by fire. In the name of Jesus, enough is enough. You can see, this is the, this is the wickedness we are talking about in the world. This is the wickedness. This is the wickedness. You are not lazy. You are hardworking. You are putting in all the necessary efforts for some terrible power somewhere. They are converting your good grapes into wild grapes. Yeah? They are disappointing your expectations. They are damaging your expectations. And there is nothing that can... I can understand why this man was going bonkers. Why, why he was bad. He had taken time to put in a very good job. But the wicked decided that that good job shall be a wasted effort. Somebody said, any power that is saying that your good jobs will always be a wasted effort, shall die by thunder, shall die by fire, in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that is boasting against you, that is saying all your good efforts will always end up as wasted effort, shall die by fire, in the name of Jesus. Any power that is saying all your good jobs shall always end up as wasted effort, shall die by thunder, shall die by fire, shall die by thunder, shall die by fire, in the name of Jesus. When I was reading this scripture, the Holy Spirit was giving me a lot of inspirations. You know, it was just the story of a man that planted vineyard. But if you don't sit down, discerningly, discern, and look at what the story was trying to say, you may just read it as just a story. This story taught us the strategies of the wicked. The strategy of wickedness when they want to frustrate a man or a woman. If he likes, let him go and put the best vineyard there. We will make sure that it is only wild grapes that he produces. And I see, I know it's only witches and wizards that do that. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Yeah. They will turn a, a man's life into a complete wilderness, into a complete desert. Somebody say, I pray, any power in my father's house that wants to turn my life into a wilderness, into a desert, die by fire in the name of Jesus. Any wicked power that wants to turn my life, my wife's life, my children's lives into a wilderness, into a desert. You are a liar. Let the thunder of God strike you dead in the name of Jesus. Let the thunder of the living God strike you dead in the name of Jesus. Let the thunder of the living God strike you dead. In the name of Jesus. I said the decision taken by this farmer <laughs> to destroy the vineyard that he had labored to plant is what happens to a lot of people when they become very frustrated. The decision taken by this farmer to destroy the vineyard 
that he had labored, he labored, he labored to plant is what happens to a lot of people when they become very frustrated. They destroy their own efforts. And that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to use your own hand to destroy what you have built. He wants you to use your own hand to destroy what you have constructed, to destroy what you have planted. Hallelujah to Jesus. I say from, from the next story we are about to read in the Bible, we may be able to understand why a man or woman can be planting a good vineyard, but all they get is wild grapes. Meaning that it is very possible that there are some manipulating powers. <laughs> Amen. Manipulating things from behind the curtains. John, it's possible that there are manipulating powers, manipulating things from behind the curtains. I mean, there are some power. This, even though the Bible didn't mention what actually happened in this particular instance, but it is very possible, which is all usually the case. Some powers were looking at him. When he was putting all the effort, oh, when he was putting in the fireyard in a very fruitful hill, he said, don't, don't worry, let him finish, and we will deal with him. They allowed him to put all the effort. They allowed him to spend all the time. They allowed him to spend all the money. They allowed him to do everything. And they went to wait for him at the time of harvest. Somebody's here in a power waiting for you. Or oh, that is always waiting for you at your time of harvest. In order to destroy your harvest, they shall be destroyed by the thunder fire of the living God. You are going to pray any wicked power that is always waiting for me at the point of harvest to destroy my harvest. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Any power. Yes, this is what they did for him. They didn't stop him when he was planting the vineyard. They didn't stop him. They didn't harass him when he was building the, the edge around the vineyard. They didn't stop him. They didn't harass him. They didn't attack him when he was removing the stones, when he was building the towers, when he was when he was making the wine press. They didn't go near him. But when the grapes were going to come out, that was when they waited for him. And there are some powers like this. They wait for you. At the point of harvest, ah! you are going to pray. Somebody said, You are going to say, Wicked powers, evil powers, always waiting for me at the point of harvest. Die by thunder, die by fire, die by thunder, die by fire, die by thunder, die by fire. In the name of Jesus, wicked powers, always waiting for me at the point of harvest, always waiting for my wife, waiting for my children, waiting for MFM Tampa, Florida, at the point of harvest, die by thunder, die by fire, die by thunder. For in Jesus' name we pray. Ah. This is, very, this is a very deep teaching. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us this morning. This is very deep. Look at Matthew chapter 20, chapter 13. You will now understand the, the power play of the enemy in this, in this whole saga. You will now see what, what must have transpired, what must have happened. I mean, the man planted choices vine. So where did white grapes come from? <laughs> Meaning that the enemy came to do something to that farm, to that vineyard. Because wild, wild, wild grapes can never grow by itself. <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> Some powers must have put it there. Uh, not even when he was, he kept on taking care of the farm. He was always cleaning it up, removing stones, removing weeds, removing anything that could affect his harvest. From this story, we will understand it. In Matthew chapter 13 from verse 24, the Bible says, Another parable put forth he unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. <laughs> Can you see now? So what that man did, the Bible says he planted choicest, choicest vine, which means he sowed good seeds. According to this scripture, but why men slept? Oh, there was one thing he didn't do. He was not praying. Yes, 
Works without faith is dead. Faith without works, dead. You are working. You are not adding faith. You are not adding prayer. Uh, the powers of your father's house, they will frustrate you. <laughs> uh, don't you know? You are like a Nehemiah. If you must rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, you must be holding the sword in one hand. You must be fighting. Fighting and building. Fighting and planting. If you don't fight off the frustrating powers, they will frustrate you. This was what happened to this man. He did everything but neglected the powers. He did everything but neglected the enemies. A lot of us are like that. We don't pray. We are putting our best. We are putting our talent, our skills. We are doing everything. But when it comes out with poor results, we are wondering. We are crying. <laughs> this world is controlled both by the physical and the spiritual. For that man that planted the vineyard, he only take care of the physical. He neglected the spiritual. And that was why he was frustrated. Hallelujah. What, what, what do I mean? Look at, the Bible says in Matthew 13, 25, but why men slept his enemy, which there is an enemy. That's the spiritual aspect. <laughs> he thought it's just to, just to get a good soil, get a very fruitful hill. Uh, that's okay. Put choices by. No, it's beyond that. Everything you do, you must build the wall of prayer around it. Everything you do, you must build the wall of prayer, the wall of fire around it. If you don't, they will mess you up. You can see the way they mess that man up. <laughs> and he was using his own hand to destroy what he had built. That is how wicked the enemy is. They will allow you to build the thing. They will use you to destroy it after they must have finished frustrating you. When men slept, his enemy came and sowed us among the weeds and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the task also. So the servant of the household, householder, came and said unto him, Sir, did not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then had it turns? Just the same thing that happened to that man with the vineyard. The Bible says he planted the choicest, the choicest vine. But when he looked <laughs> to, to, to harvest grapes, he was not harvesting wild grapes. Ah, somebody here, yeah. any wicked power that wants you to always harvest failure at the end of your effort, any wicked power that wants you to always harvest failure at the end of your effort shall die by thunder, shall die by fire, shall die by thunder, shall die by fire. You are going to personalize the prayer. Any wicked power that wants me, my wife and my children, to always harvest failure at the end of our effort shall die by thunder, shall die by fire, shall die by thunder, shall die by fire, shall die by thunder in the name of yes. Another title is harvesting failure. At the end of efforts, harvesting failure. At the end of efforts, this is the life of millions of people. Very good efforts. They do everything right, but they harvest failure. Always getting the wrong results. Always getting failure. Instead of grapes, they are getting they are, they are getting wild. Instead of good grapes, they are getting wild grapes. Instead of wheat, they are getting tars. The Bible says, after his, his laborers asked him, he said unto them, verse 28, Matthew 13, 28, and he said unto them, an enemy had done this. So what happened to that man? <laughs> It was an enemy that caused his good grapes to turn to wild grapes. Because how can you explain it? How can wild, wild grapes come out of choicest vine? Well, something has happened. <laughs> something, a, there's a third color. <laughs> there's a third spiritual color has entered it. 
There's an invisible hand that has entered it. Oh, my father, somebody is here. Every invisible hand of wickedness that is always entering your effort shall dry up by fire, shall dry up by fire. Every invisible hand of wickedness that is always penetrating your effort, that is always manipulating your effort, shall dry up by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. So you can see what evil hands can do. They can mess up someone's efforts. Someone's good efforts. He said unto them, an enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, We doubt then that we go and gather them up. But he said, Nay. He too understood what they wanted. They wanted us to go into the farm and try to remove what they have. They, they try to remove the wickedness they have planted so that in the process of removing the wickedness, we will now damage even the farm that we have painstakingly planted. He said, no, I have a better understanding. Here. That's the understanding that the man that planted the vineyard did not have. <laughs> you can see, he destroyed his own, he was so mad. But this one was wise. This one, that, that's what happens when you have the discerning spirit. The first man did not have any discerning spirit. I'm sure if he had discerned enough, maybe he would have just waited and looked for solutions of how to probably take care of things. But he was so mad. He destroyed everything. But he said, nay, lest while ye gather up the tears, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. This is a very wise man. This is, may the Lord give you wisdom. The Bible says, be gentle as the dove, be wise as the serpent. You have to have the wisdom of this world <laughs> to manage this world. If you don't, <laughs> they will mess you up. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. But he said, nay, lest while ye gather up the tears, the tears, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. Don't, don't, don't worry yourself. Let, let, let them grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, I will say to those who are reaping, ah, the reapers, gather ye together first the tears. <laughs> let us deal with those tears first. And bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Somebody is here. You are going to pray. God of Elijah. God of Elijah. God of Elijah. Arise in your power. Burn to ashes the wickedness of the wicked in my life. In the name of Jesus. God of Elijah. God of Elijah. God of Elijah. Burn to ashes the wickedness of the wicked in my life. In my wife's life. In my children's lives. In the name of Jesus. Ah. May the Lord give us understanding in the name of Jesus. As I said, so this morning, the Lord has brought you here to reveal to you the secret of your problems. That's what this story is just telling us. This story, this story is telling us the problem and the solution. From the second story, from the man who planted wheat, we were able to see solution to this kind of problems. But for the first story, we saw how rash, how irrational, how wasteful, how vindictive, destructive a man can be if he's not discerning enough. You understand? Especially when he's very frustrated. Hallelujah. The two, the, the two cases, they could, even the second man should have been frustrated. Remember, if his, his laborers were frustrated. But he used wisdom. May the Lord give you wisdom. May the Lord give you wisdom. May the Lord give you wisdom. The Bible says in everything, he said, get wisdom. For wisdom is the principal thing. But in all you're getting, he said, get understanding. Get wisdom. The principal thing. In all you're getting, get understanding. You need wisdom and understanding. That was the, that was the thing that the first person lacked. The owner of the vineyard, no wisdom, no understanding. He had skills, he had talent, he had the brute energy, he had everything, you know, to work well, but he didn't have wisdom. 
Hallelujah to Jesus. I said the Lord has brought you here to know that what's happening, for you to know that what's happening to you is not ordinary. That there are spiritual forces behind your getting wrong results. That's what the owner of the vineyard did not understand. That these wrong results, these poor results, these white grapes, definitely it must have been coming from somewhere. But he decided to fight the vineyard instead of fighting the enemy. The second man fought, fought the enemy, fought the fruit of the enemy, fought the wickedness of the enemy. He told the reapers, he said, gather all the tasks together, burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. That's a wise man. Hallelujah. I said that there are spiritual forces behind your getting wrong results, no matter how much you try in life. Yeah. That it only shows us there are spiritual forces behind your getting wrong results. Hallelujah. No matter how much you try in life. The only ways you can confront this spiritual menace is to engage the divine planter of vineyards himself. To engage the divine planter of vineyard. He himself is divine according to what he said. Who can see the atrocities of the wicked and checkmate them in your life. That is inviting the Lord Jesus Christ. If that vineyard man had invited Jesus in, Jesus could have seen and be able to explain to him that these white grapes is the work of the enemy. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that planter of divine vineyard is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And that is why I read very quickly John chapter 15 from verse 1. He said, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he pruneth that it may bring forth more, more fruit. Hallelujah to Jesus. This was the problem of that man that planted the vineyard. He didn't have the true vine. Even though he had the vineyard, he didn't have the true vine. He, even though he planted the choicest vine, but he didn't have the true vine. If he had added the true vine to the affairs of his life, maybe his story would not have ended up badly the way it ended. Hallelujah to Jesus. And how can you, how can you get the true vine into your life? Most especially if all we have been discussing today is exactly what is happening in your life. The first thing for you to do is to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, the true vine. He said, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. Number two, live a holy and a righteous life. One of the problems that people have, even though they are very talented, they are very skillful, they are very you know, hardworking, but unfortunately, they have removed holiness from their lives. And if you are living carelessly, you are living in sin, the enemy is going to mess you up. Hallelujah to Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. If this man had been filled with the Holy Spirit, he would have been able to discern. If I, he probably would have been able, just like the second man in Matthew 13, he would have been able to stop whatever it is that is causing his good grapes to become wild grapes. Hallelujah. To, but because he was not filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember the story of Jacob. When Laban was trying to cheat him, an angel appeared to him in the dream and said how he was going to separate the, the speckled goats and whatever, you know, from the ring goats and stuff like that. It was in the dream that they revealed it to Jacob how he was going to outsmart Laban. If this man too had had the true vine, had had Jesus, maybe it would have been revealed to him how to take care of that problem. That's why it is good for you to have Jesus in your life. Hallelujah to Jesus. He will always give you revelations, inspirations, visions of how to solve certain problems in your life. Sometimes it may not be that you are dreaming dreams. It may be that a physical human being will come to you to tell you the solution to your problem without that person even knowing that you have that kind of problem. You are going to be shocked and say, how did you know? How did you, did you know I have a problem? Say, no, I don't know. I'm just saying my own. Because God can use anything in anyone. And even any place. 
to minister to you. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Meditate on the word of God all the time. Pray without ceasing. Remain a branch in the vineyard of the Most High God. Remain a branch. Remain a branch. Remain a branch in the vineyard of the Most High God. Father, Lord, we just want to bless you. Let us begin to thank God. But peradventure, you are here today and you have not yet surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I think this is the best time to do so, especially if the enemy has been frustrating you the way they frustrated this man with the vineyard. Hallelujah to Jesus. Just lay your right hand on your chest and repeat after me very quickly. Say, Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, I thank you for this message this morning. Thank you for mentioning my case. Thank you for dying for me on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for shedding your blood to cleanse me from all my righteousness. Today, I confess to all my sins. Lord Jesus, wash away all my sins, cleanse me from all my sins in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, today I surrender my life to you. I accept you as my Lord, my Savior, and my Master. Come into my life. Take over my life, Jesus. Come into my life, Jesus. Come into my life. Come into my life. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay, come into my life. Lord Jesus, come into my life, come into my life, come into my life, Lord Jesus, come into day. Come in to stay, come in to my life, Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, my Father, as many as have just surrendered their lives to Christ, as many as have just accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord, their Savior, and their Master. Father, remember you said you will in no wise cast away anyone that comes to you. Father, accept them in the name of Jesus. Wonderful God, today that you have accepted this, your children who have just given their life to you, Remove their names from the register of death and disaster. Remove their names from the register of hellfire and rewrite their names in the book of life. In the book of those that will spend eternity with you, Father, give them the grace to live holy and righteous even for the rest of their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for them, Father, destroy every source of frustration in their lives in Jesus' name. The power that is always sponsoring wrong results at the end of at the end of efforts, the efforts they make in life. Father, let such powers be buried by fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For the rest of us, let us begin to bless God. Let us thank this God for that which he has done again on this mountain this morning. Our God is an awesome God. Every time we come to this mountain, he speaks directly to our situation. We just want to give him glory, honor, and adorations in Jesus' name. I want you to pray, say, oh Lord, all that you have done for me this morning, the salvation, the healing, the deliverance, bury any power that may want to attack it in my life in the name of Jesus. Any power that may want to counter-attack me because of the prayers I've prayed this morning, Father, bury them by thunder 
in the name of Jesus. Let's go ahead and pray for Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry Tampa, Florida, from where this live broadcast is coming to you this morning. Father, we soak MFM Tampa, Florida in the blood of Jesus. You will build this church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. In the name of Jesus, every wicked power harassing this church shall be buried by thunder. In the name of Jesus, any wicked power anywhere that wants to attack the pastor and his family, that want to attack the ministers, the workers, the members and their families, Father, bury such powers in the mighty name of Jesus. On this mountain, mountain, O oh Lord, continue to answer your name, continue to defend your interest in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us go ahead and pray for our Father in the Lord, Dr. D.K. Ulukoya, the General Overseer, MFM Worldwide, we soak him in the blood of Jesus. We soak his wife and his children. His ministry is calling in the blood of Jesus. We pray any power anywhere that is trying to attack his efforts, uh, attack his efforts with wrong results, shall be wasted by thunder, shall be wasted by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, every effort of Dr. Lukoya we always end up in good results in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us go ahead and pray. Let's pray for all those who are supporting us. A lot of people are bringing donations and they are praying for us. The Lord will continue to bless you. Thank you very much. We, we saw your hands. The Lord will continue to increase you on every side. The Lord will continue to devour your devourers. Even as you support us prayerfully and financially, the Lord will continue to answer you by fire in the name of Jesus. We also pray for you. Every power that is sponsoring wrong results in your life shall fall down and die in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and pray for our land. We want to thank God for the glory of our land that is still, that is being restored back. Thank you very much. Remember before the COVID, the bit after the COVID, we really, really prayed for our land, especially when elections were going on in some countries. We thank God for the sanity that is gradually coming back to such countries. Now, meaning that God has answered our prayers. And we use these countries where peace is gradually coming. We use them as a point of contact to pray for countries that are going through turbulence right, right now, that are going through war right now, that the God of heaven and earth, the God of this mountain will intervene and there shall be peace again in such countries in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us commit the rest of this day, rest of this week, rest of this month, rest of this year, even the rest of our lives into the hands of God. We cover ourselves and our families with the blood of Jesus. The glory of God will continue to overshadow us and the Lord will continue to give us excellent testimonies on common breakthroughs, on common favor everywhere we go. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. Let us share the grace now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Some few announcements. By the special grace of God, we are going to have our next deliverance the first weekend in the month of May. The first weekend in the month of May. So if you are in Tampa area, be getting ready. I know some people have been telling me they are flying down. They want to come for the deliverance. Yes, come. The Lord will do it for us. And the Lord will deliver you even as you come in the mighty name of Jesus. Very soon, the flyer is going to be out. Uh, but it's going to be the first weekend in the month of May. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Please continue to share this video so that those that are in this kind of bondage can be reached and they can be saved and can be delivered. And I know that heaven will reward you, even as you share the video. Please share it on all your social media platforms. Share it to all your contacts. You never can tell the person who might be in this kind of situation that need urgent, urgent solution, urgent intervention. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let us shout seven powerful hallelujah to finally round up. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God bless you mightily. Thank you so much for joining 
And this morning's prayer meeting, my warmest regards to your family. Have a beautiful day. See you again next time if Jesus tarries in his coming. God bless you and bye for now.